travel several hundred miles to spend a holiday week with two old friends of mine, Javo and Javet. They do a clown act with a small traveling tent show, and the show always headquarters on the grounds of a large amusement park. This time it was no different. Then I saw Javo. He'd been doing the same thing a year ago when I left him. It was good to see him again, and from his greeting I knew he felt the same way. I thought about Javo and how carefully he watched over little Javet. I thought about how Javet had lost his speech and how these two wonderful people had to talk in silence. We talked of many things and I told him I could stay for a week. I asked about Javet. Javo played it big. He pretended he was angry with him. He complained about Javet's special talent for picking up things that didn't belong to him, but he never stopped smiling. He showed me where Javet was and I watched the quiet one enjoying himself. And I saw something else and said, up to his old tricks. Worse than ever. The show understands, though. Each night I make the rounds return into trinkets, and the next day he picks up more. Javel, mon petit ami. Yes, I'm staying. Hmm. Not so bad today. I recognize these things. An amphifice comb, a small one for the fat woman. Uh -huh. Teresa St. Christopher, she and her father are on the punch and Judy. These cards from the privileged tent. What about the key? An old one that the boss keeps for Jarvet to steal. <laughs> yes, I recognize everything. Everything but this. What is it? Frank Gibson, investigator. Federal Insurance Company. I didn't want to alarm Jarvo, but I felt that Frank Gibson could mean trouble. The man he bumped did not like it. He'll like it even less when he finds out what he's lost. I changed my clothes and headed for Frank Gibson's tent. I wanted to return his identification card, and there was another reason. I was curious as to why an insurance investigator was working for this small carnival as a prop man. You waiting for me? Yeah. Who are you? Michael Lanyard. That's a familiar name. I'm not surprised. What does that mean? You must hear a lot of names in your business. Where'd you get this? What difference does it make? You got it back? Not so fast. Maybe it's a little bit more important than that. Look, I came here to return it, not to get into an argument. Wait a minute. What's a guy like you doing hanging around a 10 cent carnival? That question works both ways. I'm staying with a couple of old friends, Jarvo and Jarvet. I won't ask why you're here. Jarvo, the pickpocket. I got a good mind to call the police. He's not a pickpocket, and he didn't mean any harm. If you don't want people to know who you really are, why don't you get smart and hide that card someplace? If Java could talk, he'd apologize. I'm doing it for him. Lanyard. Yeah? I'm sorry, I guess I sounded like a kid. When I realized my identification card was gone, I got sick. I've been traveling with this show for over a month now. If my identity were known, it would undo everything. Forget it. Java can't talk. You're on your own. Maybe. I'll have to think about it. If I come up with the right answer, perhaps I'll give you a call. Not me. I'm on vacation. You got anything against money? Money? No, nothing. Unless it interferes with my plans. See you around, Gibson. That's for sure. <laughs> Next day, I headed down the midway, and I heard someone who sounded friendly. Good morning. Good morning. You weren't passing by, were you? 
I was. But I can see now it would have been a mistake. Like to play? Might be interesting. Three balls for 25 cents. Knock any one of those piles of milk bottles off the stand and win yourself a ruby doll. That's hard to do. Sometimes, unless you have a hop on your fast one. Or can throw a curve. <laughs> any way at all. Use your best shot. Maybe I'm a cynic, but to me, Ruby seemed too friendly. So I played it like a guy who couldn't get himself arrested. No, thanks. If I throw any more, my arm will go up with a ball. Good morning, Frank. Hi, Ruby. Give the gentleman a prize. A man who can't hit three bottles at that range doesn't deserve a doll. Maybe you weren't using that curve you talked about. Maybe you were. Goodbye. I'll go with you. Bye, Ruby. Bye, Frank. Goodbye, Michael Lanyard. Ruby must do all right. Ruby? She does better than all right. Anyway, better when she and her husband used to do the Iron Jaw act on the Forbes show. Are you a carnival man or an insurance investigator? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Oh. Got to step into my office? Sure. First of all, I want to thank you for the way you handled that card of mine. Could have been embarrassing. Uh -huh. You were going to tell me what you're doing here. I wasn't sure until you arrived. I'm on vacation. Java and Java are old friends of mine. I visit them every year. Let's stop clowning, Lanyard. I should have waited for the contact, but you made me, so I can't. So let's talk a deal. All right. Let's talk a deal. 25%, no questions. That would amount to how much? 25 grand. You're talking about $100,000? I'm talking about the score made in the Buffalo Armored Car holdup about eight months ago. You mean that money's here? Well, like I said, I wasn't sure till you arrived. What were you doing until I arrived? Waiting for a break. You sure it's here? That's the way we got it figured. My company's already paid off the full amount to the insured armored car people. They'd be very happy to get back 75 grand. Uh -huh. What do you say? I'll think about it. Do that. Let me know what you decide. The offer's only good overnight. considered what Gibson had told me. An armored car robbery, $100,000. I had to think it out. For me, it didn't quite make sense. Why would anyone heist $100,000 and hide it in a small carnival? And if they were here, where could they keep that much money? I had the feeling that maybe Frank Gibson hadn't told me the truth, and that interested me, because I don't like being thought a fool or being lied to. Javo had told me that Javet spent many hours each day with Teresa and her father. They were teaching him about Punch and Judy. I decided to introduce myself to them. Hello there. I'm Michael Lanyard. Hello, Mr. Lanyard. Javo told me about you, and Javet in his way talks about nothing else. Oh. You must be the Teresa of the St. Christopher Medal, huh? Yes, and this is my father. Mr. Lanyard. How are you? I enjoyed your show. Most everyone does, Mr. Lanyard. There seems to be a fundamental satisfaction in watching Punch do what most of us would like to do at a time or another. Fly into a violent rage and beat everybody over the head with a club. <laughs> Don't get Papa started. He'll go into the psychological significance of Punch and Judy and you'll be here all day. That's all right. I have nothing to do. But Papa has. He must sleep. Doctor's orders. Rest between each performance. Excuse us. Of course. This also is a time when I envy Punch. Years take no toll of him. Perhaps later, Mr. Lanyard. Goodbye. They were 
nice people, but I hadn't been able to forget Frank Gibson. And I saw Frank and Ruby. I started guessing again. But there's no law that prevents a man from kissing his girl. Only I couldn't help wondering if she was his girl, or was she his partner? And now, ladies and gentlemen, Jarbo and Jarvet. My original plan was to spend a week with two friends, and nothing was going to get in my way. I'd made up my mind to tell Frank Gibson I was no longer interested in his proposition, nor was I interested in whatever game he and Ruby were playing. And I was going to add that I thought he was a big phony. I began to watch Jarvo and Jarvet do their act again, but something was wrong. There were no laughs. Jarvet had substituted the bottle of milk with a wooden one from Ruby's stand. The act had died, and Jarvo seemed unhappy. But it would be forgotten because tonight was Jarvet's birthday and Jarvo had prepared a surprise party for him. He had been so careful, I doubt he knew I had found out. Jarvet, please! It is the nipple and the nursing that bring the laugh. You cannot nurse on a wooden bottle. Go, take it back to Ruby and put it where it belongs. Go, go. We will see you in the tent later. Here's a problem, that one. Come, I have a surprise for you. The cake had three candles. Jarvo told me they were for love, devotion, and friendship. He told me that Javet was like a little boy. But he'd never forgotten that night in France when the Gestapo, in their anger, had torn the tongue from Javet's head. And he realized it was late, and that Javet hadn't returned. I told him not to worry, that I'd go and look for him. It was three hours later. I hadn't been able to find Javet. Javo had asked the other carnival people to look for Javet. He kept telling me he blamed himself because he'd hurt Javet's feelings. I told him he was wrong. That Javet had probably gone into town, that he'd return in a little while. And then Frank Gibson came in. And before he opened his mouth, I knew something was terribly wrong. You better come with me. You too, Lanyard. Gibson took us to the main tent, and then we saw him. Javet was dead. As I looked, I started to burn. I wanted to do anything that could change what had happened, but that was impossible. I told Gibson to call the sheriff. The coroner's verdict was accidental death, but I had a hunch that it was murder. What did they decide? An accident. Jarvis said the little fellow was always climbing around up there. Must have got twisted up in a rope and lost his footing. Too bad. Yeah. Well, he was on his way over to see you after the performance. Did he make it? Brought one of the bottles back. I saw him come in, got busy with a customer. Then when I had a chance to look again, Javed was gone. I guess I was the next one to see him, Lanyard. Hello, Ruby. Hello, Frank. How's your head? Be all right. What happened to you? Scouting around the lot last night, I thought I saw someone headed over toward the ring. I took out after him, but I lost him when I got clunked. You want to feel the lump? Easy. But not like a light, when I came to, I found Jarvet and went to get you and Jarvo. What did you think you saw? I don't know for sure. A big, little man, a woman? Well, it was a man, I think. At least it wore pants. There's something funny about the guy, something unusual. He was bent over and... It's like he might have been carrying something heavy on his back? Yeah, like he might have been carrying something heavy on his back. By the way, that deal I offered you is off. That sock on the head ended it. You might be wrong, Mr. Gibson. The sock on the head might have started it. Thanks for telling me. I started by making a telephone call to the company that employed Frank Gibson. What I learned surprised me. I owed Gibson an apology. He was on the level. He'd worked for them for over 10 years. He was one of their top men. I said thanks. I made a second call to a friend of mine, an actor's agent. I described Ruby and told him she once did an iron jaw act with her husband. I told him to level with me. He did. And when he finished, I knew enough about Ruby to know it was time to have a serious conversation with her about two things, $100,000 and maybe murder. Mr. 
Mr. Lanyard. Look at Punch. That's the dummy milk bottle. Charlotte was going to take this back to Ruby. She said he did. It was under Punch's costume when I opened up this morning. Oh. Money. Yeah. Do me a favor. Call the sheriff. And don't mention this to anybody on the lot. Now I had all my answers. Ruby had very cleverly concealed the money in hollow milk bottles. By accident, Charvette must have discovered it. And to protect herself, she'd murdered him. From the looks of her stand, Ruby had left in a hurry. Every bottle was empty. And then I found the satchel loaded with money. That meant she hadn't got away. Put it down. Now back away from it. You found the other bottle. After I talked to Buffalo, two people pulled that armored car stick up. One of them could have been a woman. You, huh? And your husband? My former husband. He was killed cleaning a gun two weeks later. Convenient. Yeah. He left me with $100,000 in hot money that I had to hide till it cooled off. You hit it. Let's make it short and sweet, Lanyard. 50-50. We'll leave here together, drive into town, catch a plane for nowhere, and watch the world go by. Well, that's the best offer I've had. There's only one thing wrong with it. What's that? Jarvet. You killed him. It was you Gibson saw carrying something to the main ring. It was you who hit Gibson over the head. What are you talking about, Lanyard? I'm talking about Javet. Ruby killed him. He's crazy, Frank. Look what he did to the joint. I wondered why Gibson didn't grab her gun. I guess he was too surprised to think straight. You trying to tell me she carried him up on a platform and dropped him with a rope around his neck? Sure. High places don't bother Ruby. Remember? Ritter and Romaine, the Iron Jaw Act you told me about. She could carry you up there, or me. It's an idea. Why should she kill Javet? Because he stumbled onto the hundred thousand dollars you're looking for. While you two dream up the rest of it, I'll be on my way. Why are you leaving, Ruby? Business. I'll get in touch with you, Frank. But if you want that hundred thousand, stay here and put the pressure on Lanyard. If you want that hundred thousand, better look in the case she's carrying. There's nothing in here that isn't personal to me. Of course. There's something awfully personal about that much money. What do you say, Ruby? If you touch this case, it's all off between us. If you can't trust me now... Ruby, it's just a... Go get her, Lanyard. She's got you 25 grand. I've seen some rotten dames in my life, and she belonged at the head of the class. She hadn't hesitated a second when she shot Gibson. I got angry again. I thought about how cool she must have been when she murdered Javette, and she headed for the roller coaster. into her own trap.
of the shot and saw her fall. When I looked down at her broken body, I didn't feel sorry. I figured Gibson had just saved the state a lot of money and that Jarvet's death in a small way had been paid off. The world continues in New York. You will be here day after tomorrow. Until then, I do not know. I've seen the act many times, Jarvo. I think I know the routine. Michael, will you do it? I'd like to, if you'll let me. Michel, mon ami. <laughs> <laughs> 